Welcome to the fourth webinar in a series on performing artist mental health during COVID-19. I'm Linda Mannering. Nancy Cadle and I will co-host this session and speak with Paula Thompson and Bonnie Robson about sleep and dreams during COVID-19. Thank you very much for joining us today. And we begin with a conversation and a question from a dancer. And the dancer says, I'm having difficulty sleeping at night. I'm not tired. I'm not dancing. So I'm not sleeping. And when I do finally get to sleep, I'm having disturbing dreams. What can I do about them? So our panel today is going to address this question. Our objectives for examining sleep is to, to try and provide you with an understanding of sleep architecture. The second one is to describe sleep hygiene and what we can do to help our sleep. The third is to examine dreams and nightmares as they may be relating to COVID-19. And now I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Paula Thompson. Paula is going to provide us with an understanding of sleep architecture and provide us with key aspects of our sleep. Thank you, Paula, welcome. Thank you, Linda. Uh, first of all, we all know that sleep is essential and um, sleep helps energy conservation. It also helps with recovery from whatever we have been doing the day before. It's really critical to maintain brain development and for our homeostasis, both our brain and our body. It supports our immune system. It supports our cardiorespiratory uh, systems, and it does thermal regulation. And many of you may know that if you've had a lousy night's sleep, you get all hot the next day or cold, it's just really hard to regulate those systems. Sleep is intermeshed with waking, and those are complex neural networks that interact together. And some of it is tied in with our circadian rhythm for that sleep-wake cycle, and they can easily get disrupted. The most important thing about sleep is it's dynamic. So when we're feeling great, we have a different sleep pattern. When we're under stress, it'll shift. When you're gonna perform, it's gonna shift. And these are normal things with sleep. So we can't get afraid when we have a dynamic system of sleep. But in sleep architecture, what's really important to know is we have non-REM sleep. There's four stages in that. There's the light sleep right the way through to the fourth, which is deep sleep. And in deep sleep, sometimes you can have a dream there. And I will talk about that later. The REM stage is rapid eye movement stage. And that is where we generally dream. We go through that cycle anywhere between 90 to 120 minutes, that cycle of non-REM to REM. And sometimes when we're falling asleep, we may have images. When we wake up, we have more REM sleep. So that's why we remember it. It's really important to know about the non-REM sleep is it's more parasympathetically dominated, which is where we get that recovery stage. There's lower respiration, lower heart rate, lower body temperature. We're more efficient in that stage. And research shows that the most optimal performance is that you have more non-REM sleep during that night before a show. And the REM sleep is quite the opposite. It's more sympathetic. And what's really interesting, depending on the dreams, your heart rate, your respiratory cycle, your um, temperature is going to shift depending on the dream you're having. And that can be a little bit exhausting. So if you're having a night before a performance where there's lots of REM sleep, you're going to wake up more tired. We know that sleep is so important for our health and well-being. And so I was wondering, Bonnie, if you can help share how we might prepare ourselves for a good night's sleep. Is there anything we can actually do that can improve our sleep? Thank you, Nancy. It's a privilege to be here with all of you. I'm going to talk, as you said, about preparation for sleep and sleep hygiene. You want about seven to nine hours sleep, so you want to get ready for that. First, the room you're going to sleep in should be cool and quiet and dark. Even the tiniest LED light can have an effect on the production of melatonin, which is a hormone that helps regulate our sleep cycle. So we don't want to have any uh, LED lights in our room. We use earplugs, use a sleep mask, uh, sleep-inducing sounds. 
you may need 30 to 60 minutes to unwind before you get into bed. No electronics, read a book, uh, listen to a calming podcast, some music, have a bath. Um, do your mindfulness practice now. Write out tomorrow's to-do list so that you have it ready. Have a light snack, fruit or yogurt. Avoid stimulants at this time. Alcohol is a stimulant. So you want to avoid alcohol unless some people are using it uh, to reach a state of intoxication and then they experience drowsiness, which they think helps them to get to sleep and it may well do, but then you're going to interfere with your REM sleep, which Paula just told us how vitally important that is. So maybe do some light exercise before bed, not a heavy duty aerobics. And maybe yoga. In this time of an unpredictable future, sleep can be distorted and extended screen time leads to fatigue. Maybe a nap would be nice now. If you're used to having a nap, well, then by all means, have one for 20 minutes after lunch, but always before three in the afternoon. If you're falling asleep for two to three hours and having extended sleep in the afternoon, that is not a nap. That's sleeping. Try and stay up to maintain your sleep-wake cycle until it's time for your scheduled bed. Thank you, Bonnie. That's so helpful. You know, I think we're all dealing with this stress of uncertainty, like you said. I wanted to go back um, to Paula because when she was talking about the different levels of sleep and um, the different types of sleep and how important that is and how it affects our whole being and our, uh, our health, I was wondering about dreams because certainly I've heard from patients, friends, colleagues, that a lot of people are having really strange dreams or nightmares or completely remembering their dreams when they normally don't. I didn't know, is this related to COVID? I mean, why are we having all these different dreams now, Paula? Thank you, Nancy. Um, yeah, dreaming and dreams have fascinated my unkind for forever. So let's talk about COVID-19, but let's first of all ground ourselves in some of the different types of dreams that we can have. And there are many, so I'm only going to talk about four that happen in REM sleep, and then one that happens in non-REM. And the COVID-19 may be a cluster of any number of these as well. But in REM sleep, the most typical dream is a dream that has several parts. It shifts scenes. It's populated with people or animals or monsters or bizarre figures. Uh, there's a lot of visual imagery that's often laden with emotional content. And we tend to remember these dreams when we wake up, usually the last dreams of the night in our, our waking transition. So that's just normal dreaming and we'll have many throughout the night. Anxiety dreams, on the other hand, we remember when we wake up, but the anxiety dreams are fraught with more fear or frustration. Um, dancers will often have those anxiety dreams where they don't have the right costume or they didn't go to rehearsal and all of a sudden they have to get on stage or they're caught in a labyrinth and their cue is starting. Those are anxiety dreams and they're really common performing artist dreams or you're in your pajamas and you're on stage. They have that fearful, frightening, frustrating content to them. And we remember them when we wake up. Nightmares, on the other hand, and we all get to have a nightmare, it's not, it's not discriminating, but nightmares will wake us up. And they usually have symbolic content to them. So they, they could be quite bizarre, they could be like a dream, but there's a heightened terror. And because our arousal system is um, engaged, it will wake us up. PTSD nightmares are a different flavor. They are literally nightmares that are recapitulations of the trauma that we might have suffered. Or if it's a sudden death of someone, we'll have these um, PTSD-like dreams and they tend to reoccur. And you may get woken up by them or you may waken 
in the morning and remember them. And for some, they're absolute verbatim trauma or some have more symbolic um, encoding within them. The non-REM dream are called night terrors and they don't have images. They're more thought-like and the night terrors are high arousal levels, are heart, our breathing, our body temperature, everything is activated. And those are the ones where you wake up screaming. And for in some families, it's a genetic inheritance to have those um, night terrors. They're very distressing. The COVID-19 dream, and there are researchers around the world looking at this, they are a combination of those REM dreams that I've talked about, the four major classifications not typically night terrors, although perhaps they could get engaged. They are highly vivid, filled with really bizarre images. And the reason is because we're in more social isolation. We have less external stimulus that's happening during the day. We may be less physically active. We may have an, a disproportion of light sources that we're um, affecting our circadian rhythm with. And so what we do is we grab images from our past and from our present day and we make this composite dream. But the nature of a COVID-19 dream is it's really vivid. It's almost like our dreams are more alive than our waking days these um, currently. And they're being reported often. Now, what to do when you have these really vivid dreams that may be more terrifying or frightening in nature? There's a thing called cognitive restructuring. And you literally, before you go to sleep, you mentally rehearse, just like a performer is going to rehearse their show. You're going to rehearse your dream and you can rehearse a new ending or a new middle or a whole different story. And if you do that enough, especially with um, PTSD dreams, you can actually start to shift the outcome of that dream narrative. And for some people, you can practice lucid dreaming. So before you're falling asleep, you're going to say, I'm knowing I'm in a dream. And you'll hear your voice saying you're in a dream. It will pull down that fear. So these are things you can do at nighttime if these dreams become more distressing. But with lack of stimulus, the COVID-19 dream life may become another movie in our heads that we're getting entertained by or terrified by. So I'm going to turn it over to Bonnie because I know she's going to talk about some of the other things that we do to manage them. You're having trouble falling asleep. Mm -hmm. You're in, you have insomnia. You've prepared the room for sleep. You're all ready. You've done your unwinding. You turn off the light and it's a half an hour and you still haven't fallen asleep. Maybe, um, maybe you think, oh, well, I'll take a pill. That'll help me relax and it'll get me sleeping. There are risks, I should remind you, of taking medication both short and long term. And the American Medical Association does not recommend sleeping pills, especially now. If you really want to pursue this with some sort of medication to help you, please contact telehealth or telemedicine or your own health care provider to discuss it. But let's go back. You're not sleeping. You're in bed. Everything's arranged. And do you you want to do your body scan. Now we practiced that before, but I'll just remind you for the new folks joining us, this is breathing into the toes and letting it go, letting everything go and relaxing. Breathing in further up your ankles, your shins, and gradually up your body. You get the idea. Until you've taken your healing breath, maybe you put a color in it to every part of your body. And, and when you're exhaling, you're letting go of the tension more and more. But your mind wanders. And you're thinking, um, well, what you're going to do tomorrow? Uh, that's all right. Don't get up on yourself. Let it go. Come back and start your breath. And you're breathing in and out where you left off or start over completely. Oh, but now I'm thinking about a conversation that I'm going to have tomorrow. Well, I need to bring myself back. No judgment. Just gently observing what you're doing. So you eventually sleep will overtake you. It'll catch up when you're least expecting it. 
I'm going to talk about a few things that might interfere with you sleeping. One is called sleep starts, and probably most of you experience this. In fact, it's 70% of people experience it. It's very normal. And you're drifting along into sleep, and suddenly you're falling, and you wake up quickly. Uh, these are normal muscular skeletal contractions at the onset of sleep, and they're irritating and annoying. Another annoying thing is restless leg syndrome. Now, in restless leg syndrome, you're having irrepressible need to move your legs, and it's often accompanied by a very uncomfortable sensation of tingling, prickly feeling, and uh, tension and aching. It's very common in dancers. And it may be related to a dietary supplement deficiency. So when we all get back after we return to practice and to dance, you again may want to inquire with your health practitioner uh, or your physical therapist whether or not you're a candidate for supplementation, whether massage or other things to help with restless legs. But now it's 3 a.m. This is serious. You're wide awake. And you've got work tomorrow, and what are you going to do? Okay, they suggest that you get up, and if possible, go into another room. If not, stay in your own room, but redo some of your unwinding, maybe all of it, maybe a little. And whatever, you'll get tired. You'll say, this is boring. <laughs> That's time to get back into your bed, and we're going to do uh, progressive muscular relaxation. It's a tension release of body exercise. So how you were gonna learn that? Take your fist and take the breath in and clench your fist tight, 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 as hard as you can, let go. And you'll notice your skin is mottled. It's a little tingly, it's warm. We'll try it again. Breathe tight, 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 <sighs> let go. Now we're going to do the same as we did with the body scan work from our toes progressively up our body. Let's just try our feet and toes. Tight, 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 tight. <sighs> Let go. Okay, and as you work up your body, you're lying on your back and you work all progressively up, tightening your tummy, your chest, neck, head and neck, and finally your whole body. And let yourself relax back into your bed, turn your head to the side, shut your eyes, go to your safe place and sleep. With practice, you can do this very efficiently and enjoy a good night's sleep. Thank you, Bonnie, for those practical tools that can help us in these difficult times if we cannot fall asleep. And I think all of us are probably experiencing some sort of sleep disruption at this time. And just to emphasize, it's normal in these difficult times to be affected and our sleep to be um, changed in some way, or perhaps, as Paula said, have disturbing dreams. But there are things that we can do to manage these things, to try and help us stay asleep, get to sleep. And you mentioned some wonderful tips here today so we can help ourselves. And I'm wondering if we can wrap this up and summarize some of the things that have been so eloquently suggested by all our uh, expert panel members today and try and help the audience understand that first of all, sleep disturbance is a normal and a natural thing in times of stress and distress. And there are some things that we can do to help ourselves to get our sleep, maybe not back to normal completely, but to help us get back. Um, Paula talked about and Bonnie talked about the sleep cycle and how important it was to get between seven and nine hours sleep. And as performers, you're probably used to staying up late and maybe sleeping late or not going to sleep at all. And so now your sleep cycle is going to be disrupted in a different way. And so adjusting that, but ensuring that you're getting sufficient sleep is, is very important. So the sleep cycle and the whole sleep cycle is dynamic and maybe shifting. And a couple of strategies that were suggested were cognitive restructuring to actually try and change the dream if it was frightening for you. And we can do that. Our mind is a very powerful, wonderful tool. And if you try and figure out what the happy ending is that you would like to have in your dream, you can try and, 
and enhance that that dream in a positive way. So that was something that was mentioned. Taking notes was another thing. If you're worried about something, your mind's going on and on and on, write a note, tell yourself this is what you want to do the next day. Getting up if you can't sleep, going to a different room. Remember, we save our bedroom for a couple of important things and the most important thing is sleep and the other things that were suggested make sure your room your bedroom is cool and dark and uh, perhaps take a hot bath because that helps to trick your body into thinking that it's now cooler and we usually have to be in a cool room with our body temperatures lowering when we sleep and i think that we're all going to benefit from these tips today so you've been really helpful for helping us figure out how to help ourselves. So thank you all of you for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you next time for our fifth webinar, which is going to ex explore fragility and resilience in this difficult time with COVID-19. And so we look forward to seeing you. And if you have any questions or feedback, there are some links on the YouTube um, channel underneath and also on the Twitter panels that you can use to provide us with some feedback about how you are enjoying these webinars, if there's anything else you'd like us to address, or if you have a question that you'd like to ask our panel of experts that we can address. All of these tips are individual based. Some may work better for others, and there are a number of other tips, and we're going to keep going trying to provide you with tips so that you can choose what's best for you. So thank you all. We look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you very much. Stay safe, be well, be creative with your sleep patterns. Bye for now.